Hey guys, it's Paul and, well, most of our 2D2. Uh, in my last video, I mentioned I went to the Downey Fantasy Con and towards the end of the event, I noticed my dome was no longer moving. I could hear the motor trying, but nothing was happening. And now that I have things apart, I can tell that the motor is spinning, but I think the shaft inside is broken. I got nine years out of it. It really wasn't designed to spin around a heavy uh, R2-D2 dome and rockler bearing, so I guess I got a pretty good life out of that. In the world of R2 building, it's always good to have spare parts. In my case, I had built a second R2, and I sold it a few months ago, but I kept a lot of the pieces that I thought I would need in the future as spares for this one. And I do have a spare motor, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this guy out. Well, actually, I actually already have it out for testing. And uh, we're gonna put the new motor in, and uh, hopefully, once we get everything back together, R2's head is gonna move back and forth, because we have an event with the Portland Sea Dogs this weekend, and R2 needs to be tip-top. You ready to do this? Let's go. All right, so, uh, well, first of all, welcome to Where Nerdy is Cool. My name is Paul. This is my friend R2D2, or what's left him at the moment. Uh, if you are a new viewer, welcome. I hope you decide to become a subscriber. Please mash that button in the corner and become one. If you're a regular viewer, welcome back. Great to have you. So here's what's going on, and uh, I'll get the radio right here, um, and I can do a close-up as well, but uh, I uh, tick, 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 and nothing's really engaging. I thought maybe it was a problem with maybe a set screw, was it making contact with a shaft, but that's not the case at all. So this is a, a Pittman motor, and uh, back when we were getting these uh, from the early days of the R2 Builders Club, they were fairly expensive, and uh, they're known for being very strong and very reliable. And uh, they're kind of hard to find now, which makes me really glad that I bought two when I bought them. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna get this guy snipped out of here. The second motor I have behind R2, and what I need to do is I had used a different drive system uh, on this R2 before. So what I need to do is I need to remove the mounting structure that's around the motor, and hopefully that mounting structure will work with what I have here. I have my own little custom Delrin gear that I have, and uh, around the inside of R2's uh, dome, there's a metal tooth gear. Uh, this way, when this thing spins, it's not metal on metal, it's, it's the Delrin on top of the aluminum, and it makes for a fairly smooth travel. Uh, I also replaced the ball bearings inside the Rockler, with uh, Delrin ones, and uh, that's worked pretty well. Uh, made it as quiet as you really could, uh, especially when you've got a big hollow droid that kind of bounces and sounds like a kettle drum moving around. So let's get to the next step here. Let's uh, get this guy unplugged, and let's work on getting the motor mount removed. Okay, I'm kind of squished here in the corner. Uh, when you have a 200 pound R2, uh, you don't have the ability to just roll them downstairs and uh, bring them to the workshop you kind of have to bring everything upstairs with you. So I'm in the corner of my living room. It's hot outside, so the nice thing is I'm indoors in the air conditioning. Um, so this is the spare motor. Let me just give you a little close-up of that. And uh, this is the, uh, oh, come on, focus, play nice for me. But uh, it has this mounting here that, uh, oh, come on, camera, play nice. Play nice for me, thank you. So this uh, plastic piece sits on top, and then that's what makes contact on top. Now, I'm going to remove this one because I much prefer the setup I had on the other one, uh, if I can. But uh, first of all, this aluminum piece right here has to go, so we're gonna get that out of here. Okay. And that is out. All right, now we need to free this guy of the shaft. And we just need to find the right size to do it. And that's the one. Okay, that's moving nicely. And is there another set screw? Nope, that's not one. It's just like any other set screw, if it's been there for a long time. You need to go away. No, you're, 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 you're in the butt today. Go, go, go.
The kitten is driving me crazy today. Okay, how much fun is this gonna be to beat out of here? So I think I'm going to take this downstairs where I can put it in the vise and I can work on prying this out. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I'm back. I, uh, it's, uh, it's off and uh, I, my focus is being kind of wonky because it just wants to be wonky. But So anyway, uh, that is off. now. Need to disconnect the other motor, and uh, I would like to use the same exact top and fitting uh, if I can salvage it. Um, I'm having to use a vise and a hammer to you know pry these things out because they've been in there so so long. So uh, here we go. The other thing I did real quick is I did put power on this to make sure it was happy before and after I started um, you know beating on it because <laughs> sometimes if you um, do beat on these too hard, sometimes you can separate the shaft and the entire internal mechanism can go wonky. Uh, which is what happened over here. So here we go. So all right, so now <laughs> time to get that one free. Okay, we're back. So replacement motor, good news is has the same hole pattern as the other one had. And uh, this piece I have made a while back, uh, CNC'd it so that uh, this fitting will fit in and, and hold it in place. So now all I gotta do, back over here, get everything lined up, and get this fella mounted, or at least put back together. So what I'll do is I'll get the motor at least in the mount, and I, there we go. Now the uh, reason that I, uh, I bought two of these uh, years ago, I didn't, I bought one, and this one is the longer one. The other one I had is a little bit shorter and it was interfering with some of the mechanisms I had inside the second R2-D2. So that was one of the problems. And so now, without pinching my fingers too much here, I'm gonna get this guy kind of locked in here. All right. So then the other thing that became really fun here with this is, uh, again, I'm gonna crawl towards the camera and hold the focus, play it's nice here. This, um, has a, a hub piece here in the bottom and over time it, it had really gotten clogged up so I had to take a 440 tap and go through the hole a couple times to clean that out and as you can see now what I'm using is a set screw this is the super long screw uh, I just don't want to lose another set screw so I figure if I have something extra long it'll it'll help it work out so uh, but as you see in the world of R2 building sometimes you kind of make it up as you go along and uh, and hope for the best so what I'm going to do now is uh, get this guy, and there's our flat spot of the shaft. Let's get you at least there a little bit. Now, I can't go too tight on this because I need to mount this inside the frame, and I need to find out what the sweet spot is height-wise for these teeth to match up with uh, what's going on over here. And also, i got to try to get this in a spot, here we go, where I can actually access the set screw from within R2-D2. Um, I can't remove the um, dome ring because it has a wire attachment to the slip ring. So, uh, you know, that's kind of a pain in the rear end. I mean, I think I could probably disconnect a few things, but I'm trying to do this without disconnecting too much. So here we go. Okay, let's just drop this wire in here. And uh, I left one of these guys here. Okay, that's it. As a guide, here we go. And somewhere here. This is where being acrobatic is helpful. There we go. I'm just going to put that in a little tight here. All right, second one. I can let go of that now briefly. And uh, come on, guy. Let's get that guy, the nylon, not in there from there. Okay, you can see the height is moving up as I tighten this guy up. All right, now 
before we go too crazy tightening anything up, let's get that dome ring over here. And uh, I'm not going to bolt anything down yet. There we go. And uh, the screws for this. And I need to make sure this is the. Uh, that goes on in a certain way. So I'm trying to make sure everything's centered up before I start going crazy, making adjustments and, and hammering away on that. Oops, wrong way. On this guy here. And uh, I definitely want to. Oops, let's loosen you a bit so we can get the other guy in. And there we go. Hard part with the. Uh, with R2 is getting the Rockler centered. There we go. Sometimes it doesn't really kind of take until you get a few teeth in there. Okay. Because you, what you want is you want this to move smoothly and if the Rockler is under any kind of pressure or being, you know, bent or whatever, it's not going to work. So, this looks good. I'm curious about our clearance under this stuff, but right now it's not too terrible. The terrible part is going to be getting the set screw in. Okay, so I've knocked him down. I don't know if that's going to be too much or too little, but it's in there a little loose, so I, I certainly have some play. Give you another little tap here. Tap, tap. Boy, a little goes a long way here, tapping this guy. Okay, now it's time to go crazy with the set screw. Okay, we're back. Um, I did have to play around a lot with the height. Uh, as you can see here, you know, it's not supposed to be up near the top. It's just supposed to be just engaging. And it seems to be what it's doing. Because remember, uh, we have to get under here. So we want to make sure we have the clearance, and it looks like we do. Sorry for the focus here, again. Uh, so, back here, I just kind of real quickly spliced everything in. And, uh, where's the remote? All right, and uh, let's give it a go. So it looks like we may be in a good spot. I would love to be able to raise it up a little bit more, but it's pretty much at the tippy top of that shaft. But I'm gonna mess with this for a few seconds off camera, and then uh, I'm gonna solder that uh, those connectors back together and see what happens. Okay, I was able to maybe get, oh, maybe a millimeter or two, and uh, it looks like Going pretty well. So there we go. All right, um, now to tidy up the electronics side of this. All right, so uh, pardon my wobbling here. So um, I'm not crazy about soldering in my living room of all things, but uh, got the extension cord and it's heating up, and uh, I got the little uh, whatever you call the wire holder there. Um, set up so I can uh, you know get these wires uh, soldered. I got a little bit of the shrink tubing here and uh, with any luck um, my soldering will be good enough so that the shrink tubing will fit over it. So uh, once that heats up and is done I'll go ahead and do the uh, I'll do the negative leads first then I'll do the positives and uh, we'll see how the shrink tubing will fit over there. Shrink it up and uh, hopefully that will be as tidy as we can get. And then we'll, get the, uh, we'll put the dome on top and uh, make sure everything is spinning okay. Okay, it's done. I um, had to use a match to uh, do the shrink tubing, but uh, you know, it's not the worst soldering job I've ever seen. So uh, I'll uh, make sure everything works before I button everything up. And uh, then it's on to putting the dome on and uh, let's see how that goes. Okay, um, 
the, you know, the wiring is done. Uh, the head's back on, we got power, we're all good here. Uh, got the uh, remote on, so uh, let's see how he does. All right, well, I'd say my little buddy is happy. You happy? <laughs> all right. So anyway, uh, I hadn't done an R2 video in a long time. Uh, this one just happened because I just really needed to do this. But uh, yeah, so that's how it goes when you're an R2 builder. You have you build this guy, and uh, if you have a busy event schedule, well, sometimes things just up and fail. And uh, well, thankfully, I had you know thought ahead a couple years ago to have that spare motor, and uh, I had to you know do a lot of work to jiggle some of the um, mount adapters to make it all work. But hey, it's done. So that's my video for this week. I thank you guys for watching. If you like the channel, make sure you subscribe. I don't want you to miss any of my videos. If you want to help me out and support me and my channel, you can do so. I got a link down below here for patreon.com forward slash where nerdy is cool. On the YouTube homepage, I also have a link if you want to donate via PayPal. Hey, you know, if you want to donate one, two, five thousand dollars, hey, I'm good with anything you want to do. So I thank you guys for watching, and remember, this is where nerdy is cool. You know, it really is. It is. Anyway, till next time.